So I'm going to ask each of you uh, in four minutes to talk about what inspired your solution, some of the characteristics of it, and why it is, in fact, game changing. We can start with you. All right. I've lived in many places around the world, and I've seen firsthand how global environmental changes are impacting water everywhere. Water is so central to everything we do that our civilizations have been built around it. Economically, water is core to almost every major sector, from agriculture and fisheries, to industry and energy production, to human health and well-being. Ecologically, this is also true. Water is life. Freshwater ecosystems are the most biodiverse on Earth by far. And anywhere on the planet where we find fresh water, life flourishes. Because water is so central to everything we do, how you manage water has a massive impact. If you manage water well, you open up the door to a world of new possibilities for people, ecosystems, and economies all at once. If we manage water poorly, this door remains closed. By managing water well, we can become stewards of thriving ecosystems, resilient cities, secure food systems, stable coastlines, and much more. To begin to manage water well, we need to understand it. Now, you may be wondering, water is constantly changing. It's moving, it's mixing, it's heating up or cooling down. Then what does it mean to understand water? Well, water in its journey across the land changes as it picks up a vast variety of materials. It carries with it information about the places it's been. We measured that information. At Jibe, we've built a fully automatic digital water monitoring system. We combine data from satellite imagery and on-the-ground sensors into actionable information. On-the-ground teams use this information to make better management decisions and boost their impact. For example, the World Wildlife Fund uses this information to track the impact of some of its conservation efforts, as well as the impacts of dams and mining. The Nature Conservancy uses it to track how nitrates from farms enter the river to help keep people and wildlife safe downstream. Drinking water utilities and engineering firms use this information as an early warning system to be able to take action more quickly and keep our drinking water safe. Imagine for a moment that you would have information about all your most important lakes, rivers, reservoirs, and coastal areas available to you. Imagine if you could see the impact that your decisions are having in real time on water. We've enabled three key things to get you there. Firstly, we've built our system for scale. It can be applied to basins, regions, or even entire countries, helping you to track and prioritize multiple locations in a science-based and easy-to-understand way. Secondly, water is becoming rapidly less predictable. Rising global temperatures, droughts and floods, storms and fires all have a direct impact on water. We need to enhance the resilience of these systems as a whole, and to do that, we must work together. Our system forms a basis for dialogue and co collaboration between multiple stakeholders around each specific water body. And thirdly, water is constantly changing, but there are seasonal and longer-term patterns to this change. We track those patterns and place new data in context, helping you see where action is most needed. In short, water is fundamental to the health of ecosystems, communities, individual businesses, and economies as a whole. We need to change the way we understand and manage water. The untapped potential in good water management is enormous. We're here to help. Let's get started. Thank you, Sarah. That was really interesting. Uh, and now, please let me introduce a video address of Kate Steele, the CEO of Nithio, the digital solution we want to feature today for addressing SDG 7, affordable and clean energy. Hi, my name is Kate Steele. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Nithio. We are excited to tell you more about Nithio and what we're doing to drive the energy transition in Africa and reach universal access to electricity. 
My whole career has been spent working in energy access, primarily developing the market for off-grid solutions in Africa. When the founding team for Nithio came together, we were motivated by the fact that there were great technical solutions for decentralized access, primarily household scale solar systems, but that they were not scaling as rapidly as they could. We saw two clear barriers to growth. First, there were limited ways to assess household credit risk. For a finance solution, this made it really difficult for companies to assess risk and plan their cash flows. Second, there wasn't a financing partner that could scale with companies, one that could start with them at the early stages and continue to provide debt as they grew. At Nithia, we set out to solve both these challenges. We developed a model for understanding and predicting pay-as-you-go payment patterns and established a financing vehicle, Nithio FI, which provides receivables-backed financing to large international distributors, small local companies, and everything in between. So what does that look like on the ground? Well, imagine a company in Western Kenya selling solar panels for lighting and cell phone charging to households that otherwise have no access to electricity. These systems are sold with flexible pay-as-you-go terms. That means the system only works when the customer is current on their payments, but there's no penalty in most cases for paying slowly. The flexibility of pay-as-you-go is great for customers. It opens up a much wider market, but it can be difficult for sellers and distributors to manage cash flows and even harder to help investors understand the credit risk. That keeps investors out of the market, limiting the ability for these companies to grow. Our AI-driven model, powered by the Nithio Risk Analytics Engine, can determine the different types of payment patterns and predict how households will repay. This information is clearly communicated through our dashboard product, the Portfolio Portal, and can be used for investment decision-making and monitoring. We use this product ourselves as we deploy capital to enable sellers to continue to scale. Our financing vehicle has already supported more than 10 companies in this space and provided financing for over 100,000 household systems. That means more than 350,000 people with newer improved access to electricity. While our primary focus is on household resilience, those solar home systems provide nearly 900,000 tons of CO2 ev emissions avoided. We're excited to share this progress to date, but we're just getting started. It will take billions to finance the energy transition, and we look forward to working with partners to mobilize these funds through greater understanding of risks and opportunities. Great. And now, Sally, I would love you to tell us about Countermeasure and its key features. Thank you. In 2015, five Asian countries were said to be responsible for the most mismanaged plastics pollution worldwide. And in 2017, governments and businesses in Asia felt fingers being pointed at them because it was said that 10 of the rivers, eight of which in Asia, namely the Yangtze, the Yellow, the Hai, the Pearl, the Amur, the Mekong, and the Indus, and the Ganges in Asia, and the Niger and the Nile in Africa were responsible for up to 93% of river plastics pollution that ends up in the ocean. But when we at the UN Environment Programme approached the governments of these countries to try and help, there were questions. We were asked which of our measuring stations were used to produce this data and which of our experts were involved in the process. UNEP didn't have an answer. Studies were scientifically solid they were published in peer-reviewed journals, but they were based on estimates and desk reviews. Local stakeholders did not have information on the ground, in the water, in order to identify effective actions to stop river plastic pollution. Plastics is such a useful and versatile and even environment-friendly material when it's used properly. It's not possible to eliminate it completely from our economies and our lives. So the trick is to focus interventions on the most problematic and polluting plastic items and the most heavily polluted locations causing plastic leakage into our natural environment. With support from the government and people of Japan, UNEP's quest for plastic-free rivers began in 2019. The project Promotion of Action Against Marine Plastic Litter in Asia and the Pacific, known as Countermeasure, operated along rivers in Asia, including the Mekong, the Indian part of the Ganges, and collaborated with the Pavithra Ganga, or Clean River Program of Sri Lanka. 
countermeasure collects and shares georeferenced data about plastic pollution in rivers and straits in innovative ways in collaboration with several of our partners. For example, the mobile microplastic sampling equipment called Albatross is used in the water to detect plastic items using machine learning and computer vision techniques. Smart Plastic Litter Monitoring, or P-Litter, is a platform developed with the Geoinformatics Center at the Asian Institute of Technology in Thailand. And it makes georeferenced and AI-enhanced detection of plastic leakage sources possible at diverse levels so that we can actually track pollution and trace it to the source and solve it there. Countermeasure co counts a few results so far. For example, we've had over 5,500 plastic leakage points along rivers in Asia geolocated and reached out to close to half a million people to spread the word about plastic pollution rivers in Asia. We also confirmed that the use and disposal of medical supplies and protective gears to fight COVID-19 have exacerbated plastic pollution in rivers. And we enabled the development of three protocols of the MRC's detailed methodology for the cost-effective and long-term monitoring of riverine plastic debris pollution in the lower Mekong River. So the Mekong River has become the first river in the world with its own plastic monitoring protocol. At UNEP, we're currently building this use case and others like it into what's called the World Environment Situation Room. It's an environmental data platform hosting solutions to tackle our three biggest environmental challenges, climate change, loss of biodiversity, and pollution. If you're interested in helping, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Really impressive. And now to conclude, Boron, please take us through to the Amazon and explain to us how Rainforest Connection came about and how it is game-changing to life here on Earth. Thank you, Sinian. Um, I'd like to start by, show, by playing a 30-second uh, sound clip of a uh, soundscape in Panama. I'd like you to listen to it and tell me how many species you can hear. Okay, so what, what, uh, what this is, can we play this please? So this is the soundscape that um, I was talking about in Panama. Um, if, we can, if we can turn it up a little bit. Okay, it's, it's not gonna work, it's okay. Um, let's go to the next slide please. Can we play that? Okay, so this 30 second clip that you are looking at right now, um, I wish the sounds were there, it would have been more powerful, but you can hear it a little bit. You can see all these species that are being detected in just 30 seconds of audio. This is a 2D representation spectrogram. Um, you can see uh, one of my favorite monkeys, howler monkeys, several calls there, many species of birds, uh, cicadas, other bugs. But this whole time, there was actually a chainsaw going in the background, and you could hear it. So none of this would have been possible without AI. I wish the sound played earlier. You would have heard how powerful all the species were calling at the same time. And it would have been very difficult for a normal human ear to just pick out all these different species. As you can see, there's 10 different species uh, that we're vocalizing, and there's a chainsaw that we can only hear when we actually turn down all the species. That was the only way we could hear it. Our human ear can hear it. But the reality is AI can actually pick out all of that. So my organization, Rainforest Connection, uh, we use the power of sound and AI to detect um, anomalies that exist in soundscapes and to be able to use that to detect specific things like illegal logging. Why is that important? Well, that's important because every year over 12 million acres of forest, of rainforest is being destroyed, threatening more than a million species to extinction. One of the main goals of SDG 15 is to actually, um, one of the main goals of SDG 15 is to halt land degradation and stop biodiversity loss. Our team is a group of individuals from all over the world, and we come together to use the power of sound and AI
to protect the world. And the way we do that is we install these inexpensive recorders. Uh, we call them the Guardian. These recorders sit on top of the tree canopy. And you can see one of them on the top right of the screen. My right, I guess, if I turn around. Um, these are the recorders that I'm talking about. They sit on top of the tree canopy. They're designed to record the soundscape 24-7. And we use the power of AI of artificial intelligence to pick out these anomalies that I was talking about and be able to detect things like chainsaws that are indicative of illegal logging or poaching, which is indicative of uh, deforestation, uh, so, sorry, uh, people, you know, killing animals. But we can also pick out very specific sounds which are indicative of species. And these sounds help us understand the state of biodiversity, but they also help us understand um, what we can do to support and protect biodiversity. And that's why it's, it's very important. One of the best ways to protect the forest is to listen to it, and that's what we do. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was very fascinating. I think we were all moved, even by just the little sounds we did hear. Yeah. Uh, and let us also be reminded that we are just at the beginning of our journey with artificial intelligence and how transformative this technology is going to be in achieving these solutions. So ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for, for our distinguished speakers here. Thank you so much.